So in today's episode, we're gonna answer the question, is this new Nova Go carbon fiber travel acoustic real or a toy? Today's episode is sponsored by the new Snark Air Tuner. I wanna thank them for making this video possible. This is one of those guitars that has a lot of promises made about it. It's available on Amazon. The price on this guitar is $189 for a carbon fiber travel guitar with a deluxe gig bag. It comes in a ton of colors and for $100 more, you can get electronics in it. And that may sound a little expensive for just a pickup, but there's a lot more to it. And this is the model that's more expensive, but I checked, they are exactly the same except for this technology that's in them, which we'll go through in the audio samples. One thing you may not know if you're new to this channel, when we do these deep dive videos, I spend at least a month, sometimes three months with an instrument. This I've had for almost three months. They claim you can uh, use it as a, 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 a paddle for a canoe because they can just take any kind of abuse and it's waterproof. However, this is the one with the electronics in it. So because it has the one with the electronics in it, uh, I can't stick it in water. <laughs> so here's what we have. Let's go over the specifications. They don't tell you what type of frets they are. Um, they look like nickel to me. The tuning keys are very basic and they are working fine. However, I don't have any intention to change them, but if you were to upgrade, it would make a difference on how fine the tuning would be, how quick you could get it to tune up. We have a carbon fiber nut that's actually part of the neck. And then you have a zero fret. Here's where it gets a little interesting. The guitar came with some pretty cruddy strings and they weren't staying in tune, so I had to replace them. I put some Dodarios on there, but also the action was a little high and so I had to sand the bridge a little bit. I've had to make no adjustments to the neck. What's interesting, really interesting, is the truss rod cover is rubber and it kind of sticks in there and seals it so that water can't get in your truss rod. So they're not kidding when they say it's waterproof. Again, I can't test that part to see if it actually seals from the water because again, I can't get water near the electronics. But it looks pretty good. I don't know if I would submerge this under water, but I would tell you right now if it was, if water was being splashed on you, uh, you know, from some kind of activity outside, I would not be concerned about this. However, the frets, if they aren't stainless steel, you know, there might be some corrosion there that you might have to polish out. I wanna give you a reference of size. You can see it here next to a Les Paul. You can see it's just basically a little smaller than a Les Paul. Okay, on the back you have a rounded molded back here, right here, and then of course a contour for the cut. Um, you know, normally we don't do the handshake test on an acoustic guitar, but this one passes immensely. Obviously it's a little thick right there, but uh, that's fantastic. And the handshake test is where we hold the guitar, where the neck meets the body, see how comfortable it is uh, to get around in that area. And it's way more comfortable than it should be for a guitar like this. After getting over those initial impressions, I gotta talk about now, this is the electric version. Like I said, it's $100 more. So what does that mean? Well, you get an output jack, so you can plug it in to an amplifier or a PA system, but also you get a USB-C charging port, and that's to charge the system. The entire electronic system is this is one silver knob. You push down on it, and it glows green to let you know it's on, and it's just a basic volume knob, that's it, there's no EQ controls. However, what there is with one more tap is, whoops, one more tap, tap, that, blue. That's built-in reverb. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you've seen this technology before when I reviewed the High Vibe system. Now, this is not the High Vibe system, but it is some kind of copy of that. And what they're doing is they're using an actuator or dual actuators, and they're connecting them to the electronics. And what that does is they connect them to the body of the guitar, and they turn the body of the guitar into a speaker. So later, when we do the sound demonstration, when you hear the sounds, I will not be plugging direct into the computer or into the interfaces. What you will be hearing is what the room can hear, so yes, this guitar is an actual speaker and you'll hear the effects coming through the air like you would from an actual speaker. Let's see what you get when you get this guitar. First, you're gonna get a gig bag, but what's nice is it's like hard rubber. See, it flexes, but it is like a hard rubber. I mean, it's not crush proof, but it's definitely a pretty durable bag. Another interesting idea is the strap that comes with it right here is it comes with two of these strap ends. You put these on the guitar and then there you can use this as your guitar strap for your guitar. So it's included. There is no real padding. It's kind of hard but you have a deep pocket right here and it's pretty good. You could put a lot of stuff in here. What will come in it is that USB cable for charging if you get the electric one, an Allen wrench, and a very nicely packaged polish cloth. 
Okay, so let's get into the geeky stuff. The first thing is looking over the entire guitar, it doesn't say where it's manufactured. However, from the packaging and the boxes I got, it says it's manufactured in China. Now, they claim this is a two-piece body and I wanna verify that and there's a couple ways we can do that. What they said is that the top is one whole piece and the bottom is a piece and then they're just kind of glued together. They're saying this is important because one of the advantages to this is that your bridge is actually molded into the top of your guitar and that might improve the tone and the sustain. So let's check. If you look here on the headstock, you can see where there's definitely two pieces to allude to what they're saying. And we can actually go through this sound hole on the side and look inside. So let's take a look. Looking inside, I see two things. First, you can absolutely see where the bridge is part of the molded top. So it is one piece, like they said. And you can also see where the bracing is also in the mold, which is interesting. It's not just smooth in there, and that's probably to improve the sound. And right here, you can actually see the actuators, which are the things that are turning the guitar body into a speaker. Now looking here, you can see what I was talking about earlier about the graphite nut being molded into the neck. You can see the zero fret and of course the tuning keys. And you can also now see up close that truss rod cover that's made of rubber. It's like a rubber plug. Now, speaking of the zero fret, I can confirm right now that they are not stainless steel. You can see cuts into the fret from the strings already, and stainless steel fret would not have cuts from strings. And that's one of the downfalls of the zero fret, especially with nickel frets. It's weird when they make choices to make materials that last forever and then pair them with materials that can wear quickly. That's one downfall of this guitar already. Okay, let's see if these frets are level. Okay, and the first fret I come across, a little bit high. So other than that first fret, all the frets seem level and fine. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that fret using a convenient way, plus a hack that's cost effective. But please understand, just don't level and crown all your frets just because of one issue. And also verify that the fret is just not lifted up. It might only just need to be tapped down. To fix this high fret, all we're gonna do is loosen the strings just enough to where they go on the sides of the fretboard. Then just use some painter's tape to tape down the strings at the base of the neck so that they're cleanly on the sides of the neck and then do it again on the headstock. Again, just keeping all your strings out of the way of the fretboard. It'll look like this. But keep in mind, if you buy a string spreader, you can do this in seconds, although there's an expense to having that tool. Now you move the strings out of the way, you just use a Sharpie to mark the high fret. This is important because if you've done it right, all the Sharpie will be removed when you're done filing the fret. So what we're going to use is the Stumac Fret Kisser. This is essentially a fret rocker with built-in sandpaper. It's really, really handy, but it's very expensive. So it does take a while for it to pay for itself. So what you do is put it here like you're going to fret rock. Okay, and then move it side to side. And then you can see now, no fret rocking. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and clean that up. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna use the Z file, but you can use any rounding file. Go ahead and cover it right here, like so, and just go ahead. To polish the fret back up, you have a couple options. You can use the fret erasers, or you can use the micro mesh pads that I absolutely love, or you can just use steel wool. I'm gonna use the micro mesh pads because they're my favorite and they get the best results every time. I start with 1500 and I'm gonna end at 12,000. This usually takes about five to maybe 10 minutes tops. Now that you've successfully removed all the Sharpie, you're done. I told you I'd show you another way to do this. The basic way is to take a piece of 400 grit paper with double stick or put double stick tape on it. Cut yourself off a little strip like so and then wrap it around your fret rocker. Now this is important. You want to painters tape the frets. You are not going to be uh, sanding because the fret rocker is abrasive compared to the fret kisser that I used earlier. The reason why you want adhesive on the sandpaper is because you want it to be perfectly flat. You don't want it rounded and you basically do it the same way I just used a fret kisser. This is not ideal deal, but it works perfectly and you'll be able to achieve the same results. So now let's go ahead and do a friction test and see how well the frets were polished. The frets feel pretty good, but they're definitely not highly polished. So I would definitely polish them. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a video down below in the description that'll help you out. Now, something to take notice too is that they're doing hemispherical frets, which means they're rounding them over on the edges. I wanna show you how they do this because it is very work intensive. What they do is they basically round off the edges of the fret before it even goes on the fretboard. And because of this, these always pass the sock test with flying colors. Let's see how these do. And it's a perfect five out of five on the treble side. And let's check the bass side. 
and I can already tell it's another perfect five out of five, again, because the frets are just rounded over so nicely. However, this is not a rolled fingerboard. In other words, the edge of the fingerboard is kind of sharp and it's not a hindrance. It doesn't bother you when playing, but it's not a rolled fingerboard edge. Now checking the radius of the fretboard, I'm coming in at 16 inch radius on the fretboard and looking at the back of the neck, we're seeing definitely a U shape to the back of the neck and definitely the same U shape when you get around the 12th fret. So again, a kind of more modern electric guitar style neck feel. So the nut, we have 42.23 millimeters or 1.662. The 12th fret, we have 2.071 or 52.61 millimeters. Thickness at the first fret is 22.19 millimeters or 0.873. The thickness at the 12th fret is 0.941 or 23.92 millimeters. So again, pretty thin. And I'm showing a 23 inch scale length on the guitar with a total length on the guitar at just over 35 or basically 35 and a half inches long. And the guitar is coming weighing in at just over four pounds, so four pounds. Also something worth pointing out is that this is a USB-C and it can plug in your computer and your computer will immediately see this guitar so you can record with the guitar and use the built-in effects or you can plug it into an amp or any other quarter inch plug-in and run it just like audio out. So you have two choices. Um, and while you're plugging in your computer recording, it's also charging the unit inside. Now, one thing I need to mention is I've had this guitar for about three months and I have tortured it. I left it in my truck a couple of times and it was actually in tune when I grabbed it. I left it in the cold. I have abused it in every way and this guitar stays very stable. I feel very confident that this guitar could take a lot of abuse when it comes to temperatures and different environments. Now, one major downfall of this guitar is it's top heavy. In fact, it has pretty bad neck dive. And that's why you can see I already installed my strap that I use because I kept feeling like I was supporting the weight of the headstock by holding the neck. It's not really bad, but it's still an issue. And if that's something that really irritates you, this is something that I would tell you to seriously consider. I got past it pretty quickly, but it is an issue. And this is a good time to mention our sponsor, Snark, with the new Snark Air that is rechargeable and it's easy touch system. What's great about this is it doesn't have the arm like it used to have and you can put it on the back of the headstock and just double tap the button on the top. You can tune your guitar discreetly without anyone knowing that it's happening. And again, the biggest appeal of this is, is it doesn't require any of those expensive 2032 batteries. You just plug the included USB cable into a laptop or in your phone chargers and charge it up and you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and do some sound samples and here's what's gonna get interesting real fast. I'm gonna play the guitar the way you would get it if you got the non-electric version. And then I'm gonna kick in the electric version. I don't mean through the actual transducer pickup. I'm gonna show you how it sounds with the built-in effects. Turn the volume on the reverb up. What I absolutely love about this reverb is not as it sounds great, especially as it's coming at you through this sound port, but I love being able to mute and play an acoustic like this.
So on the next effects, I'm not a big fan. Next, you're gonna have a delay. And it's all right. I'm not really enthused with it because again, the body's kind of small and the, the material's so dense, it really is not a huge speaker. So the reverb kind of acts in, in, in the same time with the sound of the guitar, where this, you kind of have to wait till the, the guitar's not making sound. So let me show you what I mean by that. But this is what I mean, if you just start playing. see it just comes after the effect and the same thing with this other flangey phaser thing So you can tell, I think for me, the reverb is the, is the star of the show. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this guitar? Well, first, I have to say it's one of the best mini travel style acoustics I've ever played. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the mini acoustics I've played over the years. Uh, I've owned a bunch, I reviewed a bunch, and even the Baby Taylor, which is probably one of my favorite small little acoustics, this sounded better. Not only because it had the effects, but it just sounded better. Like I said before, that port really kind of adds some low end, and when you're playing it, it sounds a little better to you. Plus, it's super comfortable to play. That's one of the biggest takeaways I can tell you is that I kept picking it up because it was so, so easy. Even though the neck was a little heavier, the headstock was heavy, even without a strap, I could just kind of hold it by myself and just walk around and play it. It was very nice. And so I have to say I was impressed with that. Now, of course, I pointed out the shortcomings because one of the things that can really hose up your budget is if you need a lot of repairs, they can either be the same price or exceed the price of the guitar. And that's why I wanna show some how-tos whenever I'm doing guitars price like this. Another thing to point out on this guitar is the battery life. I had different experiences with that. In other words, sometimes I feel like I played for weeks, turned it on and it would just play every time I pick it up. And then one day it was just dead. So I wasn't sure where it was dying at, but I can tell you for sure that I can play two, even three hours straight without the battery dying, uh, definitely two hours for sure, uh, playing it straight and uh, you won't worry about the batteries dying. So overall, I have to say that even considering the issues I found, the guitar is really good. And like I said, it was a joy to play. I, I found myself continually playing it all the time. And when I bought this guitar, I was seriously thinking this was just gonna be off. Get the guitar, do the video, and then send it on its way. However, I have to tell you, I really enjoy the guitar, and I think I'm gonna hang on to it for a while because, like I said, I keep going to it. As a fast, easy, fun thing, it's just really cool guitar, and like I said, it takes the abuse. And before you guys go, I just want you to consider being a subscriber and hitting the thumbs up button. They do huge dividends to the channel, and they don't cost you a thing. However, hanging out to the end is the biggest thank you can ever give to me. And that's why I want to thank you for your time. Until the next time, know your gear.